Hotep. I am known as Aki Tolliver. I'm an independent researcher of Kushite Kemetic Spiritual Science. This is a four part video series of Kushite Kemetic Spiritual Science named Greatest Story Ever Stolen. The topics that was be spoken on are spirituality, astronomy, astrology, and religion. Know how to be critical of yourself to avoid the criticism from others. No critical criticism, no self. May your heart never be vain for what you know. Take counsel from the ignorant as well as the wise. Since one never reaches the limits of art and there has never been an artisan who has attained perfection. The wise man doubts often and changes his mind. The fool is obstinate and doubt not. He knoweth all things but his own ignorance. The first topic, spirituality. Spirituality is a connection to something bigger than ourselves. It's the search for the meaning in life and it's a universal experience. During the video series, you may hear me say deity or netaru. And this means the attribute of divine nature or universe or oneself. Most of the elements found on earth and in our bodies are also found in the universe. Planets and moons go around stars just as electrons, protons, and neutrons go around the nucleus of an atom, occurring billions of times in the universe. In fact, our bodies have more atoms than there are stars in the universe. Stars and planets are born and die just like us. We are the universe. This is a picture of a nebula. A nebula is where stars are born. Billions and billions of galaxies, trillions and trillions of stars and planets make up our universe. A galaxy made up of many stars and planets. It's like a circle with a dot in the middle at a microcosm level. Our solar system consisting of nine planets that go around the sun where the nine planets go in a circular motion around the sun in a circle where the dot in the middle circle is the sun. Our solar system is like an atom at a microcosm level. An atom is a circle with a dot in the middle at a microcosm level. The atom is the smallest part of a molecule. There's nothing smaller than an atom and our bodies are made of billions and billions of atoms. We are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, to the rest of the universe atomically. There's many atoms in a single molecule of our DNA as there are stars in a typical galaxy. We are, each of us, a little universe. 
We are part of this universe. We are in this universe, but perhaps more important than both of those facts is that the universe is in us. Not only are we in the universe, the universe is in us, and I don't know of a deeper spiritual feeling than what that brings upon me. Kush, Greek word Ethiopia, dating starting around 70,000 BC. This is a graph showing all major civilizations in history. And give you a moment to study it. So some observations can be made is that there's two civilizations lasting far much longer than the rest. Those two were the first two civilizations in Africa, the first two on our planet. They were the first one being Kush, helped start other civilizations. So a civilization, the root word being civil, in order to be a civilization, hopefully the, the people and the culture are civil. Kush, Ethiopia, was the first and oldest civilization to this day. It helped uh, initiate other civilizations including Egypt, Kemet. Another observation is that being that it was the first and the long lasting one, why haven't our schools taught us about these two great civilizations? Most of the time, from my experience, most mathematical concepts or science concepts or even in the arts and sciences everything mostly came from the European and Greek cultures. I think that's very uh, unfortunate and hopefully the presentation is to inspire one to research for themselves their history and to know where they came from and perhaps understand who they are and to have a great footing to where they're going. So this presentation focuses on Kush and Kemet because I wanted to understand their spiritual culture and I think that helped guide them to be peaceful and acquainted to all other civilizations that were around at the time and we have maybe something to learn from those civilizations because I believe a lot is not working today in our current culture. This is a map of Africa. Notice it's not split up into various countries and it's called Ethiopia. This is what the Greeks called Africa back then. The Africans called it Akibolan. So Ethiopia eventually was named Ethiopia today. Ethiopia, or Kush, which I'm going to call for the remainder of the video series, was the first and only civilizations on the entire planet at the time. These are some statues of some priests and kings of Kush. And we know there's a priest standing here based off the attire that he's wearing. So on the far right, we see the statue of the priest wearing a leopard skin. 
This is a clearer picture of a priest leading a procession wearing the leper skin. He's in the front. And the leper skin, as you know, a leopard has many dots on the skin. And those stop dots represent the stars in the heavens. So the priesthood in Cush, where they, they developed the first libraries and universities and temples, and where they studied the heavens, they did not worship gods. That concept of God, uh, like what comes from the Europeans and the Greeks, did not exist. And I'll explain that later. But here we see the procession in Cush. And we see the boat, they're carrying a boat, and that symbolizes Ra riding in the boat on the celestial boat in the sky. And Ra represented oneself. So there's always oneness, even though there was duality and everything, and they split things to help understand the, the wholeness of everything. So... The Neteru, which there are many, each represent an aspect of nature. And Ra represents an aspect of nature as well. And where nature or the universe or the all being is you included yourself. We're not separate from that. So everything that a Neteru represents also represented yourself. So Kush, which was the first civilization, it was the second golden age, where I consider the first golden age being of the first people of the Homo sapiens sapiens, which were the Pygmy Twa people, which started in Central Africa in the Congo. And they were the first to navigate the lands, look at the heavens, map the heavens, and develop a spirituality and understanding nature, and they help understand themselves. And they also were able to become, move from hunter-gatherers and begin agriculture where they can settle and um, become very spiritual. And then from that first golden age became, the first civilization was developed by the Kushites, which are a little north of the Pygmy Twa people in Africa. And the Kushites were responsible for creating the first civilizations worldwide, create the first nation in Africa called Taseti with a priesthood government, create a holistic communal and spiritual culture, discovering and implementing divine laws, create the initial concepts of major religions of the world, develop astronomical mythology, a solar calendar, and the Zodiac, Zodiac. Founded the ancient civilization Kemet, which is Egypt. Created the first temples, libraries, and universities, and the ancient mystery system of holistic development. Now let's talk about the daughter of Cush, Kemet, which is Egypt. And I believe it started around 17,000 years BC. And this is another map, just to show you again, this is Ethiopia, what the Greeks call it. Akebolan is the name that the Africans called it. And this was all considered Kush. There was only one civilization. And Kemet, which is Egypt, the Greek word is Egypt, started in the top right um, northern east part of Africa, the northeast tip where you see Aegyptus, and that's the uh, Greek word for Kemet. Sorry, the top of, along the Nile River, where these civilizations resided. So in stand in line with the topic, spirituality, speak of the, one of the kings of Kemet, who came from Cush, named Amenhotep III. And they named his name, he comes from Cush, and where the main nature was Amun. So even a lot of parts, a lot of times the, the kings or people in Kemet and Cush, their names were, had uh, the Neteru in their name. So Amun is part of his name. Amun meaning the unseen, 
and it was the main Neturu of Cush. So he brought that Neturu of Cush and the, Netru, the main Neturu of Kemet was Ra, brought them two together and created Amun-Ra. Not a god to worship, but just that's just symbolizing bringing those two spiritualities together, bringing Cush and Kemet together. His son, Akhenaten, Aten, which is also Atom, so his name has Atom in it, Akhenaten, Cush for adoring Ra. So Ra and Aten are similar or the same. So the he wanted to have the worshiping or the monotheism of of that and the the Kemites were not into worshiping anything. They believed that they were one with everything of the divine. They believed they were divine themselves, that nothing was above them, that they ousted out Akhenaten for, for opposing that. And that was the only slight time where that was attempted to begin, to be like a first religion. But that did not occur in Kemet. Okay, this is a picture of Amun-Ra. This is showing five Neturus. We'll go into some of them later. The first one there is Aten, Atom. And the fourth one there is Amun-Ra. We know that it's Amun-Ra because Amun has ram horns on his head. And he'll have a sun disk on his head as well. And this is Akhenaten again. He was the first, he was the son of Amenhotep III who emphasized and tried to push the worshiping of Ra. So he was the first in, in creating monotheism. And this is a picture of the sun, Ra, shining on his family. And that's Queen Nefertiti on the right and their daughters. And their son, their only son, was King Tut, by the way. So in staying in line with spirituality, we'll speak of the Trinity. So doing my research, I found a total of seven Trinities, or you call it triads. We'll go into each one. This is called the Shabaka Stone. Shabaka uh, wanted to maintain a historical event of the creation story, so he had this stone created. So this is showing the creation of our universe, which is also considered the first trinity. This is a picture of the universe again. And what we see here are remnants of the Big Bang. Everything begun from one atom. So here, this is NASA showing a picture of many galaxies uh, coming from expanding. So our universe is continuing to expand from a source, from one source. And that's what we see here. So back to the creation story, which was on the Shabaka stone. We have everything started out of black matter, which is none or nothingness. But there is something. So it's the divine essence. What we see in our universe was keeping everything in order. That blackness we see in the universe, that's none. So out of none came Atom. Atom created himself, out of himself, and became one out of none, the cosmic ocean. And he spat out two twins, Shu and Tefnut. Shu, the male, Tefnut, the female. 
An atom, shoe, and teth nut are considered the first trinity. So atom, which is where we get atom from, where everything is comes from, or the smallest part of particles and elements are atoms. Shoe is air, represents air. Teth nut represents water. And then their children, Geb, is the earth, and Nut is fire. So Geb is a male, Nut is a female. So there's always duality, there's always hot, cold, male, female, good, bad, and everything. They did not have a God or worship, believe, they couldn't believe in a God being a male where in Christianity one says he and never see the one as a god as a goddess, they would not have that concept in Kemet and Kush. They believe everything uh, included duality. This is a pictorial picture of the creation story where we see Atom on the bottom right. We see Geb at the very bottom laying down and the heavens above him. And we have Ra riding in the boat on the left with Tehuti and Mayat, which we'll get into later. So that's the night sky on the left and the day on the right. And those are the stars in the heaven. And we see falcons there uh, in the middle there too, Haru. So all this predates Kemet, by the way, okay? And we will go into the symbol of the Unk, where we see the, the heavens um, being held up as well. Here is Atom on the left. This is the Commission depiction of him. It's Atom in science, that's the Atom. And in Christianity, there's Adam. So in science, Atom, we are all made of stardust, carbon, which is six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. And in Adam in Christianity, God made Atom out of dust, made from the dust we came from, the dust we shall return. And in Kemet, on the left, Atom, the spirit child believed Adam created himself from a mound of dust. The second trinity, we have Amun, Mut, and Kansu. That's the second trinity. And Kansu represented the moon. He was the son of Amun and Mut. This is Abu Simbu in Ethiopia, Kush. Let's go in. As we walk in, we head towards the Holy of Holies. In the very back, we have our third trinity. Ta, Amen, and Ra. Ramses II is the third there seated. He's the third statue. But that's our third trinity. The fourth trinity is Ta, Sekhmet, and Neferten. The fifth trinity it's Ta, Seker, and Asar. The sixth trinity comes out of Kemet. It was the most popular trinity in ancient history. And it was other civilizations took it and created their own Neturu from it and had similar stories to this trinity. So since it was so popular, I must describe it. So the sixth trinity 
includes Heru, Asar, and Aset. The Greek names are Horus, Osiris, and Isis. So there's a story behind this trinity, just like there were stories behind the other trinities that were listed. So this story is based off Asar. That's him in the middle. And he's sitting like that because he's sitting like what well, baboons sit in that way. Because his helper is Tahuti, who was also represented as a baboon. So this, that's why he's sitting as uh, his helper, uh, representing Tahuti as well. Tahuti's part of the story as well. So Asar was given kingship of Kemet by Geb, his father. And his brother Set became envious of his brother. And to get become king himself, he was very um, evil in a way in that he wanted to do away with his brother in order for him to become king. So he had a party where he invited his friends, 72 of his friends, and he brought invited his brother Asar. And the game they played was whoever can fit into this coffin wins a prize. So Set created a coffin that only his brother could fit in. Knowing this, he had other people fit in the coffin. They were unsuccessful. And they was like, okay, brother, you try it. Asar did get in the coffin. The 72 and Set closed the coffin and took him to the Nile River and where it went down the Nile and no one saw of Asar again. Asar was later found by a Phoenician king because uh, the coffin was caught up in a tamarack tree. That tree was used as one of the pillars in the king, Phoenician king's uh, castle. And they noticed the coffin and word was sent out to the lands that this coffin was found. Aset, which was the sister and wife of Asar, went out with um, Asar's sister, Nephthys, to look for her husband, Asar, and got known of the word that there was in Phoenician, Phoenician king had found Asar, and they retrieved the coffin, and Asar, had already passed away and Set uh, realizes that they found um, Asar. So Set was like, um, was disappointed that the body was found and he cuts the body up into 14 pieces and scatters them throughout the land. Aset, which is Isis, goes out to look for Asar again, and through the help of Tahuti, which is another netter, was able to find 13 pieces, but not the 14th piece. The 14th piece was the phalanx of Asar. So Aset really wanted to have a baby through Asar, so Tahuti crafted a fake phalanx for Asar, Aset, placed it on Asar, so an immaculate conception could bear their son, Haru, which is on the left. Haru is very upset as he grows up. He is fatherless and he knows Set, um, who is now ruling Kemet, uh, is very evil. Set is, 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 a, is an evil person. He, he brings strife and not the spiritual, the true spirituality of Kemet. So he believes he needs to avenge his father. He was the first hero, and that's the word hero comes from Haru. And we get a lot of Asian movies where we have the, the plot where the son avenges his father comes from this story. So Haru goes out, avenges his father, is unsuccessful the first time, but through getting help from Tahuti, which is the, the, the Neturu of wisdom was able to conquer Set 
the second time he fought him and was didn't kill Set, but was able to conquer Set and became king of Ke of Kemet. So that story sums it up. Uh, Haru represents different aspects so does Asar and a set of ourselves okay and it also has cosmological meanings as well which we'll get into so that is the sixth trinity this is a depiction of the immaculate conception where we have Asar laying down in a, a Fake phalanx created by Tehuti was laid upon him, and then Aset became a falcon and had an immaculate conception and bore Haru, her son, which is at the feet of Aset. So we see falcon birds at the, the feet and, and, the, and the head, and we see Asar's sister at the head helping out Aset, and that's Neptis at the head there and this is the depiction the the metu netter showing the immaculate conception and there's the seventh trinity which christianity developed and this is the son the father and the holy spirit and where the son of god is jesus and jesus replaced haru father replaced asar and the Holy Spirit replaced a set. We'll get into that in another video. And that concludes the Trinities. Asar. This is a depiction of Asar. Again, Asar is not a god. There were no gods in Kemet. Asar was not a real person. Asar represented, he was over the netherworld, the afterlife. Asar is oneself. The, the Kushite Kemetic spiritual science, the initiates and people of the land aspired to be Asar. Asar was the epitome of being one with yourself, with nature, being divine, Seeing yourself as divine, seeing everything outside of yourself divine, not letting things upset yourself, to follow Mayat. We'll get into Mayat later. It's Haru. Haru is the son of Asar, and he has a falcon head. The Greek word for Haru is Horus. And this is the son of, again, of Asar. And he also represents the rebirth of spiritual aspiration in the mind as the desire for enlightenment. No longer is there an interest in worldly pursuits which are empty and shallow. Desire to face and conquer the lower self. Set, which was part of that Trinity story, notice his head is not of any kind of animal. It's an irregular type shaped head because he represents ego, separation, analytical, and linear. He's the one that killed his brother Sar in the Trinity story. So all of these Netarus represent oneself. This statue showing a king in the middle we have Haru and Set on either side of him. Haru touching his right side of the temple of his brain and Set touching the left. The ongoing battle in your everyday life is Haru, which is your will, needing Tahuti's wisdom, assisting to overcome Set, your ego, to become a Sar your highest self-consciousness. Mayat. Mayat represents virtues of truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, 
divine right order, harmony, and balance. Maya is the counterpart of Tehuti. There are 42 principles of Mayat. These are the first of the 42. You may see the word Ku listed in one of the principles of Mayat. And Ku means the higher level of the soul. That's the third one listed there. It has, I have not carried away offerings from the Ku. The fourth one, I have not stolen the offerings to the Neturu. So Neturu also means nature. I have not cursed nature as the sixth one states. Let's look at some more here. I have not polluted the air. I have not caused grief. I am not a person of violence. I have not caused terror. Here's and here's the last of the forty two. So Maya was used as a guide for the people of Kush and Kemet to move through life and to uplift their personality, to become a better person within themselves and to be civil with each other. And by following Maya, they will um, become greater individuals. You will free yourself when you learn to be neutral and follow the instructions of your heart without letting things perturb you. This is the way of Maya. Again, this is a SAR. Just to show you what this netter looks like. I described him earlier. This is Tehuti. So he was represented by an ibis bird. He stood for balance, wisdom, and scribesmanship. The Greek word was Toth. And his beak is shaped like the crescent moon. He was the helper of Asar. Ampu. The Greek word Anibus has a dog head. Anibus assisted in mummyship, in mummying of people who went, went into Westing. And he also assisted in the afterlife. So Anibus again has a dog head, D-O-G. And some things that I kind of noticed is that Dog is God spelled backwards. Dogma, which means a principle or a set of principles laid down by an authority as true, spelled backwards, is Am God. And this is Ampu looking over mummying a person. This person, you know, is being mummied. Because the mummies frequently had, they were encased in shrouds and had red X's placed on them. And we'll talk about the X's in another video. This is the coming forth by day. Or the Book of the Dead, and this has many meanings. We'll get into that. This is show the spirituality, represent the spirituality of Cush and Kemet. 
And on the far left, we have an individual dressed in white. His name is Ani. And this is, represents you or I in being led by Anpu, the, the god uh, Neturu that I just spoke of, the dog Neturu, who looked over mummification and guided one in Westing, which I'll describe Westing later. So in Kush and Kemet, they did not have a word for death. They did not believe that one actually dies, that life continues. So you, when you go into Westing, which I'll explain what that word comes later, uh, you consider Westing once your body passes away. You're being led by Anpu, who will take you to the scales of Mayat, and you see him being controlling the scales and the heart being weighed to the ostrich feather of Mayat on the right. And it's always in balance because Tehuti, wisdom, is keeping that scale in balance. And then after the heart is weighed and you're taken to Asar by his son Haru there in the middle and being judged by Asar determines if you meet your ancestors in the Duat in the heavens. So also notice there's four uh, little small objects there in front of Asar. We'll get into the, what those four mean later. There's a lotus flower. He's sitting on the square. He's also, uh, Asar is holding uh, two objects, which we'll talk to about next. But also I wanted to say that this whole uh, description here, when I said when one goes into Westing, also occurs in every day when one wakes up in the morning. So in the morning, you wake up in your most peaceful state. And in the evening, you, we look at uh, what we've accomplished that day. And our ancestors weigh themselves against Mayat, make sure that they commit adultery and, and all that to become a better person. And, and if they pass those 42 principles, they are becoming better and becoming a greater person. And you're always considered a SAR, even from the get-go. Um, you're just becoming a better Asarian. Okay? So what's the SAR holding there on the right? He's the one sitting on the throne, and his sisters uh, Aset and Nephthys behind him. He's holding a crook and flail. And the crook which is the heka and the flail is in the kaka. The crook meaning to pull in love and compassion and the flail to swipe away evil. And this is a depiction of an Aset Betty King. Aset Betty means king holding a flail and a crook. So our ancestors believed that every individual, every object had nine parts. Every animal had nine parts of themselves. We'll talk about those nine parts. The first being one's ba. In the ba, the physical depiction of it is a human head on the body of a bird and the ba represents one's soul. The ka where we have two hands raised and everybody has a ka is one's personality. Along with your soul your ka never dies as well. It's always, it lives on forever. Immortality is achieved when one perfects his deeds following Mayat, as a result, unites his Ka to his Ba to form their Aku. 
and we'll talk about what Aku means later in the next. So the other seven parts are the Ab, which is one's heart, and, and another part to that of the heart is your spiritual heart, which is the Ib, and the Hat, which is your physical heart. The Aku, which I just mentioned before, is one's immortal being created after Ba and Ka are joined after Westing. Kabit is one's shadow. Kat is one's body. Rin, one's true name, kept secret at birth. Sahu, one's spiritual body. And Sakhim, Sakhim is one's life force. And that concludes spirituality. So this is four topics. I just talked about spirituality, which basically our ancestors started uh, way back with the Pygmy Twa people, navigated the world and the land and looked outside themselves, looked at things bigger than themselves, looked at things smaller than themselves and studied nature, the universe, study each other and created stories like the one, the Trinity stories that I mentioned to help pass on their understanding of nature. They also created math uh, in order to understand nature and language. So all things come about to try to understand and work with ourselves and nature. The next video will be of astronomy and astrology and tie that in to spirituality. Some of the books that helped guide me in my understanding, in my journey, um, are listed here, are shown here. And I recommend uh, purchasing to learn, uh, to help your understanding in your own spiritual journey. These can be found on Amazon and in African bookstores. These are some of the authors of those books. And these, some of these are our ancestors and elders who are still living. A lot of these uh, ancestors have made videos on YouTube that I recommend you go and, and, and become educated. And here's some more of our ancestors and elders who have researched African history. And this concludes the first video of this presentation. And I hope that you continue to watch the other three videos. Thank you and peace.